Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, we're going to be looking at the features, controls, and how to use the Minolta SRT-102. The 102 was an updated version of the Minolta SRT-101 from 1966. The 102 was introduced in 1973 and was in production until 1975. Okay, so the camera weighs, the body only, weighs 710 grams or 25 ounces. And let's start where I always start when doing one of these camera videos, on the top right as you hold the camera. Okay, we will have, here we have our shutter speed dial and speeds are from B to one one thousandth of a second. You will note that sixtieth of a second is in red. That is the flash sync speed for electronic flash. You can use speeds 60 or below, not above. Do not set the shutter speed dial in between stops. You cannot do that. It could damage the shutter. Okay, behind the shutter speed dial in red here, we see the film plane indication. That is for macro photography if you're using extension tubes or bellows and not using the through the lens meter. It helps you to calculate the exposure loss, the light loss for the bellows or extension tubes. Okay, on the shutter speed dial, if we lift up this ring, we could set ISO. And it has a great range on the Minolta's. It goes from 6, ISO of 6, up to 6400. Okay, so if you're pushing film, if you're using 3200 speed film, you have a setting for that on the camera. Okay, to the right of the shutter speed dial, we have our plastic tip film advance lever. It has a 20 degree standoff position and 150 degrees to wind film, cock the shutter, and advance the frame counter. You could also use several smaller strokes. Okay, let's put our shutter speed to 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. Okay, the um, shutter release is threaded for a standard cable release. To the right of that, we have our additive frame counter, which will reset to S for start when we open the back. All right, let's come around to the front of the camera. Okay, we have our self-timer. Make sure our shutter is cocked. It has a 10 second delay. To activate it, you just press the button. And as we wait, it, count, it counts down. If you want to jump in the picture or if you have your camera on a tripod. And um, all right, we saw the shutter release. So you could use that again. If you want to jump in the picture, if you have your camera on a tripod using slow shutter speeds down to about a second, if you don't have a cable release, you could use a self-timer to release the camera shutter. Below the self-timer, we have our depth of field preview. The shutter must be cocked on Minolta's, at least on the Minolta's I know, the 101s, 102, 201. So you press in the button, and it stops the lens down to the aperture you have set. So you could observe depth of field on the focusing screen. To release it, just press it again. Okay, but the shutter must be cocked. So let's, all right, shutter's not cocked. This does nothing. Okay. All right, now let's come over to the left side of the camera. We have a connection for flash or PC outlet. It has a setting for either X or FP for bulbs. Make sure you always leave it set to X. Okay, now let's just go to the lens. We have a lens release button right here. We just push it down and turn the lens to turn the lens to the right. And to mount a lens, we match the red dot on the lens to the red dot on the camera. And now turn the lens to the left. Okay. This camera will also take older, non-meter coupled lenses. 
To use them, you have to use stop down mirroring. So you would press in the button, the depth of field preview button, and take your reading. A nice thing about Minolta's lenses, they have half click stops. Canon and Pentax do as well. Olympus and Nikon do not, just full stops. Now these lenses focus and mount and even the aperture ring are opposite of Nikon and Pentax. So if you have a Pentax or Nikon, just got to get used to focusing in the opposite direction. They turn in the opposite direction. Okay, let's come over to the top of the camera and we have our rewind knob and we can unfold our crank. When we are rewinding film, we're going to turn that in a clockwise position in the direction of the arrow to rewind the film back into the camera. On the top, and uh, this was an improvement over the SRT 101, we have a hot shoe, not just a cold shoe. So if you have a hot shoe flash, you don't need to plug it in to the PC outlet. It'll work just using the hot shoe. Uh, one other thing I should mention, on the SRT 101 and some other Minolta's, there is a mirror lockup switch on the right side of the camera here. Um, I believe the 102 had that in the first year of production, but by 1974, the mirror lockup was removed. I don't know why they did that, but they did. And this particular model is one of the 74 models, 75 model, I'm not sure, but it does not have the mirror lockup. All right, so we're going to open the back before we do, and then I'll get to loading film a little while later. I want to talk about the viewfinder and metering and how all that works. Um, before you open the back of the camera, especially if you haven't used it for a while, you always want to make sure there's no film in the camera. Okay, so you just turn the rewind crank a little bit. If there's no resistance, that means there's no film in the camera. All right. We're just going to pull up on the rewind knob to, and the back springs open. Okay, and we have a horizontal traveling cloth focal plane shutter. Pretty simple. The inside of the camera, pretty basic multi-slotted take-up spool. Okay, we'll get to that, more to that when we get to loading the camera. On the back, we have a dial here. You'll notice it says ASA and DIN. ASA is the equivalent of ISO, exactly. DIN was a German film speed numbers, and they are different. For example, I don't know if you could see this here, but 27 corresponds to ASO, ASA of 400, or ISO of 400. Okay, so I guess if you bought film in Germany back then, it had an, a DIN number of 27. Then you would just set your... ASA setting on the shutter speed dial to 400. All right, let's look at the bottom of the camera here. Let's turn it around this way. We have a switch here that um, goes from off, where it is now, to BC for battery check. This is your meter switch. Okay, you just put a little pressure with your thumb. And to turn the meter on, we go here. I will get back to that in a minute on how to use the battery check. In the center here, we have a standard tripod socket. We have our battery that goes in here, opens the same way, just using your thumb. It took a 1.35 volt mercury battery. Okay, those batteries are no longer available. There are some replacement batteries. This meter doesn't work on this camera, but you can find the wine air cells that will work, but they have a very short life. There are some other cells, but I haven't tried them. Here is your rewind button. Okay, you press this in to rewind film. Okay, one other thing with this rewind button is if you want to take double exposures, you make your first exposure, you then press in the rewind button, okay, then cock the shutter by using the advanced lever. And then take your second exposure. What will happen is it will just cock the shutter with that rewind button pressed in and will not advance the film. Okay, now we're going to talk about the metering system and the viewfinder. And unfortunately, I don't have a great image of the viewfinder. I took this out of the manual for the uh, 102, and it was very small in the manual, so I hope 
Um, I think this will work to, to explain how it works. So they updated the viewfinder a little bit for the 102. The 101 just had a microprism spot in the center. And I know this may be hard to see, but in the center here we have a split image rangefinder surrounded by a microprism. So the very easy to focus wide angle lenses with that split image. And then you have the microprism donut, I'll call it, to focus longer lenses. Also visible in the viewfinder is your aperture at top. And like the 101, you have your shutter speeds in the brackets at the bottom. Okay, so you don't have to take your eye away from the viewfinder to meter. The battery check, if you set that switch on the bottom to BC, this needle should go where it is now. There's a little box here, I hope you can see that, a little small black rectangular box. If the needle is there, means your battery is good. You also notice this other needle here with a circle at the end. To set proper exposure, you must match up this needle in the circle. So they come together and you have proper exposure. The meter on this camera is what Minolta calls contrast light compensating, CLC for short. It was actually an early version of segmented metering. The two CDS cells in the viewfinder measure the entire screen, but it kind of compensates for a situation like this where you have backlighting. Now many of these cameras with CDS cells, including this one, the meters don't work. And uh, you may find some that do. The problem is the battery. As I mentioned earlier, mercury batteries are no longer made. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to load the camera. And as I mentioned earlier, always make sure that there is no film in the camera by turning the rewind crank. Okay, and before loading the camera, I always suggest you set your ISO. So I'm just gonna leave it set to 400 here, but that's important. So look at your film can or look at the box, get the ISO number on it and make sure you set that. Because sometimes once you load the camera, now you're anxious to take pictures, you may forget to do that. And you could have either under or overexposed pictures depending on uh, how far off you are when you set the ISO. All right, so we're gonna pull up on the rewind knob. The back opens, okay. And here we have our roll of film. Make sure the um, rewind knob is fully up. If it stays down a little bit, you might not be able to get the film cartridge in, so I just pull up on it with my left hand, drop the cartridge in, and then put it back down so it engages the cassette. Okay, this is a multi-slotted take-up spool. We're just gonna turn it a little and insert the film into one of these slots. Okay, make sure it gets in there good. You want it to catch. Now, we're just gonna advance a little bit of film. You see how it's it caught there. An important thing to note is make sure the sprocket holes, top and bottom on the film, engage the sprocket gear in the camera, top and bottom, sprocket teeth, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so now we're gonna always make sure too there's no slack in the film. You want it to be as flat as possible, all right? So now we close the back, turn the camera over, and one other thing before we make our couple blanks, you have to make a couple blanks to get the frame number one, to get rid of that film that was exposed when we loaded the camera, right? Okay, unfold the rewind crank. Now, as I advance the film, I want you to look at this rewind crank. Notice how it turned? I'm gonna make my second blank, watch that rewind crank. All right, the fact that that's turning, that indicates that the film is coming out of the cassette and going onto the take-up spool. It means the camera was loaded properly. You could fold back down your rewind crank. Okay? If it wasn't turning, that would mean that the film pulled off the take-up spool, and if it continued that way, you wouldn't be taking pictures on film. You would just be taking, firing your shutter and thinking you're getting all these great pictures. And so it's very important to make sure that is turning. Again, that indicates that the camera is loaded properly. 
Okay, so, uh, well, you know what? Let me show you how to unload, right? And how to put the film in. You need to get it out at the end of uh, the roll. So whether or not you have a 24 or 36 exposure roll, when you get to the end, don't force the advance lever, okay? What's going to happen is if you're at, you know, you may get more than 36 pictures. You may get 37, possibly 38, but usually no more than 37. When you get to the end, you're going to try to advance the film, and it's going to stop. Do not force it, okay? It should be very easy to advance the film. Do not force it, all right? Because possibly you could pull the film out of the cassette completely, and now you got a problem. You have to go into a dark room and get that film out of the camera. Okay, so now you've taken all these great pictures. You turn the camera over, press in that rewind knob. Okay, now what that does when you press in that rewind knob, it releases that sprocket inside so that the film can be rewound. Okay, if you try to rewind without releasing that sprocket, then as you turned it, it would be very hard to turn it and you'd be ripping the film. Okay, because the sprocket gears would not, this, excuse me, because the sprocket teeth would not um, turn. They would be stationary. All right, so now we're going to rewind the film, turn in the direction of the arrow. Normally, you would just wind this until you, felt, until you felt no resistance. You would just turn this until you felt no resistance. I'm going to stop once I hear that film pull off. All right, I don't know if you heard that but I heard it pull off the spool because I use this roll for demonstration purposes. Okay, I'm going to open the back. I'm going to take our film out. And then you could send it off. It's going to have to pull up about a little bit to get it out. And we send it off to be, uh, to be developed. Okay, so that's it on the Minolta SRT-102. A really fine camera, very well made. It's a fully mechanical camera, if I didn't mention this earlier, that only requires a battery for the meter. Okay, again, this camera came out in 73, was in production till 75. You could find these on the used market. Uh, has a few nice improvements over the SRT-101. The only thing I regret is that they dropped from the 1974 model that they dropped that mirror lockup. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions on this camera, please leave your question in the comments below. I usually respond to all questions. Also, I have videos on the SRT 101 and 201, so I will put a link in the description below to those cameras. So again, thanks for watching. I usually publish a new video every Monday morning and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So I will talk to you next time.